Clint here with MrTruck.com. I'm helping the fast lane truck folks work on this trailer. This is the trailer we use for a lot of our truck reviews. And today we're going to be packing some bearings. Okay, for working on your trailer, this trailer gets used a lot. We do a lot of extreme brake tests, so checking the brakes, checking the bearings is very important to us, as would be anybody. Normally, you'd want to repack your bearings, say, once a year. You want to check your brakes a little more often than that. It uh, depends on how often you use your trailer. Now, you see in this trailer, this is a Logan Coach horse trailer, and it's a torsion axle, so the axles will hang. So I've got it on a ramp, just a regular ramp you'd use to change oil in your car, whatever you want to do, and by driving over the ramp, it lifts it up with me having to run a jack. This is how I like to do it. Now, if you have a shackle spring system with an equalizer in the middle, you may be able to use this on a small trailer, and a lot of trailers will just have to use a jack. But this is what's working for us. I already got the tire off, the wheel off. I've also, when you're doing this, check your wiring. Your wiring is probably the biggest problem there is on traders, making sure everything works on it. You want to make sure nothing's disconnected or hanging or in corrosion there. And you also check the connection inside here where the electricity goes to the brake. These are electric brakes, so it actually has a magnet that rotates in the hub, and that actually activates your brake shoes. So you want to make sure all the wiring is, is in great shape on these while you're taking it apart and looking at it. You can inspect everything, inspect your bearings, inspect your brake pads. Now, first got to take the hub off, of course. Some are easier than others. Sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're not. It's just a little hubcap, keeps the dirt and mud out. Now, grab my pan. You want to have some kind of a pan that you're going to throw the bearings in, and it's nice to have it there so when your cap comes off, it doesn't go on the dirt because you usually forget what you're doing. But anyway, now you've got the nut, a cotter key, and there's a washer, and there's the bearing. So you've got to take all that off to get to it. And we'll take my gloves off because this is going to get greasy. This is, we want a lot of rags for this job because it is a dirty job. This Carter key, now this one uh, has a, is drilled out for a greaser, so your Carter key doesn't go through the center, it goes kind of to the side. A little harder to get out. This is a, a Limpert axle on this Logan coach. I've worked with a lot of Dexter axles. They're very similar. And there's the cotter key. You always want to replace the cotter key. Just like you always want to replace your seal. Two things you, you want to replace. You'll check your bearings. You hopefully won't have to replace your bearings. And this nut, you can see how hand loose it is. Because it loosens up a little bit over time. And that's the cotter key keeps it from coming clear off. So we've got to have more tools. It's a good old channel lock. Ah, to take the nut off. Greasy nuts and then you got a washer and then there's the outside bearing. Two sets of bearing on here, the out, outer bearing and the inner bearing. Pull on a little bit, get that loosened up. And that's why it's important to have that pan down there because stuff will fall out on you. There we go, the washer and the outer bearing. Now this hub will slide right off unless your brakes are really tight. And then I'm gonna move it over here and I've got a piece of plywood. I wanna have something to set it on because you're gonna be working on it uh, with the backside open and exposed. You don't wanna lay it in dirt, you don't wanna lay it somewhere dirty because you got the internals here that are all greasy. So I'm gonna lay it over here on this piece of plywood. And while we're here now we can look at the brakes see just how much wear they have on them. I'm a long ways from the rivets, so I think I got another year in these brake pads. We use these a lot. And these are the brake shoes, and this is the magnet. Now this is a very important feature here to, to keep all the grease off here. You can see there's some grease on here, and I'll show you in a minute what the hub looks like. The grease has been going the, past the seal. 
then that's from getting hot or from just you know wearing out the grease so the seal starts leaking and then once you, that happens you're going to have grease on your brakes and your brakes are going to start grabbing and then you'll have other problems like that so you want to clean all this up so you also want to have a can of solvent around because you're going to be using that to clean off the bearings to clean up a few parts now let me show you this hub now you can see how greasy everything is this is where the seal goes and you can see the grease has been pushing past it and once it pushes past that seal then it gets on your brake shoes and causes those problems of grabbing and and not working right and you can see this magnet's got a build up of grease on it also so we want to clean it back and the thing that this magnet rides in your hub and that's what activates your brakes that's where the connection is made because of course your wire can't go round and round so it goes through the magnet the signal to uh, engage your brakes so we'll clean this up but also as you're doing this you'll want to have a straight edge a, a carpenter square whatever you have and put that across your magnet because you won't want it dished out that's what they'll way they'll wear they'll wear on the edges now this has got somewhere it's not perfectly level but it's not in bad shape not enough to replace it but that's uh that's an important part that's what actually activates things so you want to clean this off okay in the hub after you set it down and you're you're inspecting it you can see in the middle there the how much grease has gotten past that seal so that could be the seal shot or could be just from the heat getting too hot from the extreme braking that we do and then the, the grease turns into like water much thinner and it runs past the the seal and then that gets what spreads out on your brakes it's all enclosed in there so it gets trapped so then we know we've got to replace this seal and we'll inspect the bearings but also when you're in here you look at the the drum this is the drum this is where the brake shoes actually ride and you want to see if it's grooved or if it's fairly flat and same with this ring around your hub here this is where the magnet rides and you want to see if it's grooved if it's grooved then you'll need to have this lathe down or get replace it but this one actually is in good shape it hasn't really excessively grooved any part of it where the magnet rides or where the, the shoe the drum or the brake shoe rides okay next thing we'll do is we'll pull this seal out now this is a seal puller it's a cheap tool I think I paid 17 bucks for this if you're going to do these quite often you want to get some tools and this is how you pull that seal out now you can also take a punch and punch the bearing through the seal but then you ruin the bearing because you'll bend the cage on the on the actual uh, the bearing so that's if you're planning on getting new bearings and it won't matter you'll just punch it out but if you are going to try to repack these these bearings you'll want to have a tool like this and it just goes underneath the lip of the seal and hopefully this will work out it takes quite a bit of leverage on a big brake drum like this I'm gonna to have to push it down and hold it as I do this and bingo it came out if you can see that there's the old seal and of course it ruins it taking it out but you'd never want to reuse a seal you always want to replace that and then there's the bearing so if you can see in there I'm gonna pull a bearing out and then we're gonna clean this off too and we're gonna clean the old grease out as much as we can get And so now I have all the parts that I need to clean in my little bucket and I'm going to put some solvent in that. You don't want to use gasoline because you know how dangerous gasoline is. It's not what you want to use. You'll want to use a solvent to clean off the bearings. Now, you know, I've got my brush, I've got my solvent. I'm going to clean all this off and you want to use some kind of steel container. Your plastic container I means solvent. A lot of those things will eat right through plastic. So, you know, you get a good container because you don't want to be any mess you have to. And this is such a greasy mess doing bearings. So basically, I'm trying to clean off the thick stuff off these bearings. And they are dirty. Now, you'll hear me talking about China a lot during this because most all your bearings and all your traders are Chinese, just like your wiring, just like your lights. Now, the Logan Coach, though, it did give me American Goodyear Marathon tires, which I'm happy, where a lot of your trader tires are made in China also. Okay, these are the bearings as I'm cleaning them. This is the big bearing, this is the inner bearing, and this is the outer bearing. So that's the two different sizes, and that's how they slide on there. And, you know, that's what carries the weight is these bearings. A little different than what a pickup truck is. If you do a lot of braking, you're going to get them hot, and that uh, grease will get liquefied. And there's a problem. Look at that. Made in China. It's unreal. In this colder weather, it's kind of hard to get all this thick, heavy grease out. I 
There, it feels better. Okay. What the hell do I have the cap in there for? I don't need that in there. Ah, clean off the frozen nut. There's a greasy nut. Oh, my fingers are cold. Andre, why didn't you bring my iron in? Andre, bring my heater. I need a heater. Okay, I'm gonna I clean off these as much as I can with the brush. There'll always be a little bit of grease in there you can't get, but I'm gonna blow some of it off. Now, you don't wanna blow too much because, you know, this is not, it's, it's, it's a dry bearing, basically. It has, it has a little bit, of, a little bit of grease still in there. I'm gonna try to get all I can out of it, and then uh, when I use the grease packer, it'll squirt the last of it out. But get it off so I can inspect the cage. This is the cage that holds the rollers on the bearing. And I wanna check it all out, make sure everything rolls smoothly, that there's no pits in it and no bends in the cage. After you've cleaned off the bearing as much as you can, try to get all the grease you can out, the old grease. And then you wanna dry these off a bit, cause you've just you know covered them with solvent and you've got, uh, you've blown them, so now you wanna dry them a bit before you start packing grease in there. And you wanna get the solvent to have a chance to evaporate. Now I'm gonna try to clean this area up somewhat. There's, you know, there's grease on these brake shoes. It's mostly dyed, dry dust. But there's, you know, there's grease on the magnets, so I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to clean the spindle off, get some more grease off of there. And back where the seal runs, I want to make sure I've got that clean. And make sure there's no grooves in that part of the spindle. Because yet it would be bad. You want that seal to last. So you want to clean all that off. And the magnet, you get the face cleaned off. And, and all the, the grease that has worked on there. I'm cleaning the magnet off, trying to get the grease off of that, because I want a good contact between the hub and the magnet, because that's actually what activates the brakes. So that's an important connection, is that this stuff all connects. I'm also, on this one, this one is a, a limpered axle. It's a 7,000 pound axle. Uh, and there you can see a hole in the end. I'm gonna put a grease stick in it, because this has a hole drilled all the way through to the back of the uh, big bearing, the inside bearing. And that's so that you can uh, put a little grease in there and that's a little tricky because most people that do that over grease them. So you only want to grease it two or three shots and you want to rotate the tire while you're doing it, jacked up like we are here. Uh, the Dexters that I've seen, this hole goes about to the middle of the bearings and then it squirts out both bearings. I like that system a little better. This one gets really close to that seal. So if you over grease this one, you are going to push grease right out the seal onto your brake shoes again. So, you know, for most people, you're better off to just hand pack or, or pack your bearings and not use the grease zerks. But, uh, you know, I do this quite a bit, so I, I use the grease zerks instead of tearing the whole thing apart each time I, I want to do that. So, there's ways of doing it, and there's easier ways, and there's harder ways. Okay, on this we've got it somewhat cleaned up, and there's a little bit of a groove where the seal is. You normally would take out like an emery cloth and try to grind that down a little bit. And if it's, if it's too much of a groove, you can use a ready sleeve, which is just a thin sleeve that slides over there for your seal to, to run around in. And I don't think it's grooved that bad, but I also see a rough spot here. It looks like that was put in there during manufacturing. Uh, and I don't know how close that bearing. The bearing didn't show damage there. And the seal rides here, the bearing rides here and here. That's the two places for your inner and outer bearing to ride. I'm gonna file that down a little bit because I don't like that red, that rough piece there that close to the bearing. I'm amazed that the bearing didn't show any damage, but it didn't. Now after you clean the magnet off, that's a good time to check it with a straight edge, make sure that it's it's wearing fairly level. If it's uh, high in the middle, it won't break as well. And this one's just a little worn, not bad enough to replace. But you want that to not have a nice flat surface for a good contact for your brakes, so your brakes can activate. Now I'm going to pack the bearings. This is the, the big one, the inner one. You want to pack it first because that goes in the hub, and then the seal goes after that. So this is the first one that goes on your, on your spindle. Now this one, the old school way of packing is was to fill your hand full of grease and then to work this in until you fill a bit the bearing full of grease. Now, <laughs> I've done that for a long time, and I was trying to, to do a little better. When you're packing a lot of these, it's nice to have a device. This device, it's a cheap Chinese one, since we're into the Chinese things, and it's not the easiest thing in the world. My grease trick is actually stuck on a grease gun. It's a new grease gun, so it's very tight, so I'll have to attack that later. But for now, all I'm gonna do is I'll put this bearing in there, kind of center it, and then the second piece screws onto it, and then that's how we'll grease this. We'll actually squirt grease in from the top cone and it'll come out the bottom of this bearing. 
it's nice when you can buy good parts and lately I've been buying some Chinese tools and it's not the best thing in the world but that's what poor people do and it's cold out here this is November in Colorado so the grease is not moving real fast and nothing is exactly as I would like it to be so we'll see how well this works you gotta put it in there so it fits the angle of the cones and it's still off a little if we were in July this would be easy but no we had to do this in December or November or whatever this is it's the cold season I think it was five below zero here last night so we're lucky when we get up into the 30s So all you people that want to move here to Colorado, make sure you come sometime in the winter and check it out before you buy real estate. And of course it's cold, so it's not one to pump too well. The whole theory is to get the grease to go from the top cone through the bearing that come out the bottom. And I'll show you when the grease comes out the bottom. I've got to sit down and do this. Now you also got to clean the hub out. You see all the grease in there, but it's really important is to get it out enough so you can inspect the race. The race is the track that your bearing rides in inside there, and it's shaped like your bearing, and so you got to make sure you can get it cleaned off and feel it. And of course, where your seal is going to go, you want that cleaned off as well, so that the seal will go back in there and do its job. But I'm checking the race and it feels good. I don't feel notches or, or lines in that, no wear grooves. So uh, that, that to verifies what the bearing looked like. It was in good shape. <laughs> hey, yuck. Okay, boys and girls. This is, are you alive? This is how you manually pack a bearing. And we had to do this because we had a, a malfunction with the other grease gun. So I'm gonna take a bunch of this grease and do it the manual way, like they taught me in egg shop back in the 70s. Everything's getting a little stiff because it is cold. Not the ideal conditions for doing this. But you basically put the grease in your hand and you work it back and forth and this shoves it into the bearing. You just keep getting a pile of grease in your hand and that's what you do. You force it in, you're, you're actually spooning it in from the high side so it goes out the narrow side. And that's what you have to keep doing. You have to keep using that grease and pushing it through manually. A lot of fun and a very dirty job. Isn't there a guy who does dirty jobs out there somewhere? What's his name? <laughs> Seems like he had a show on the Discovery Channel. And you can kind of see the grease coming through it. And that's what we want it to do. We want it to keep forcing itself through the bearing all the way through. This is how you manually pack a bearing. What I was trying to avoid. And I could see the grease, you can see it coming through. And either way, the mechanical system or the manual, this actually helps push out the rest of the old grease that you couldn't get to. So you have nothing but the good grease on your rollers and your cone of your bearing. Now this is where I hand the greasy bearing to the cameraman. <laughs> yeah, it is greasy, greasy go forgets. Yeah. And I can see that it's in there. After you packed your bearing, manual otherwise, and you drop it back in your wheel and it sits on the race. That's what it rolls on. And now I'll put the seal in next. Use a little bit of grease on the rubber lip of the seal. This is a double lip. This is a good seal. I just want to get that in there. So everything's a lube when it goes in there and slides over to your spindle of your axle. And now I'm going to center that and I just got to pound that down. 
And like I do things redneck farmer style, there is a tool for pounding those seals in. If you just use a hammer, you may drive things out of places, and I've done that, but I'm gonna try to use something about the same size as the seal, and I hope it works. It looks like it's driving it in there. Yep, I think my cheap seal driver is gonna work. Then it looks flush. You drive the seal down to where it's flush with the hub. And I'm just up a little bit on this corner. Okay, got the seal, the bearing, the inner bearing. Now I gently slide it on the hub because I'm also having to force that new seal onto the spindle and do not want to rip anything. So there I am, I'm on. Now I just have the outer bearing to put on, the washer, the nut, and the, uh, the pencil. Another thing I'm going to do while we're here, I'm going to put a grease zerk on this one because that's how I like to grease these between the big jobs that we're doing now. So I'm going to put that grease zerk on there and then every once in a while I can pull that cap and shoot a few squirts of grease while I rotate the tire. So now we're going to pack, manually pack the little bearing. Now I've hand packed the outer bearing, I'll fit it into its race, and got the washer and the greasy nut and the cotter key, which I'll put on a little bit. This is a little tricky when it's this cold because I don't want these bearings too tight, I don't want them too loose. So they're going to feel tighter than they really are just because the grease is stiff and it's cold. So what we'll do is we'll have to come back to this on a warm day and readjust this nut. See, it feels pretty stiff and I'm not on there very tight at all. So let me get my channel locks and get some of this grease off my hands so I can actually run it. But uh, that's all you need or a giant crescent wrench, but you're not really cranking this down tight. You're gonna get it to where it's snug and you'll back it off a hole. It has a cotter key hole in there that holds the nut in place. So this gets the bearings going, so I know I'm up there pretty tight. Oh. Mm. Do I have enough tools? So now I'm putting, I'm putting the uh, cotter key back in there. I've loosened the nut up, so I hope I'm not too loose, not too tight. We will watch these and we'll readjust them as the weather warms up. And that's the right size cotter key. Just got to get it to force its way down. Uh. Some people feel this full of grease. I don't know that you necessarily need that. I don't know that it will flow out of the cap, but I don't mess with that. And this is a regular cap. You can also put a cap on here that has a rubber nipple on if you want to do that grease job. You can just pop the nipple out. But I'm just going to pound this puppy back on, and we're going to call this some good. Oh. And you can never get these on straight as they don't. Go on straight. And because it's shape, it's hard to get a driver on it. And it's very hard to do. Rubber nipple in here, so the next time I want to take the hubcap off, I'll just pop this rubber nipple and grease it. Not that these are easy to put in. They are when it's warm. Everything about this project has been on the cold side. Well, we're basically done. We just did half this trailer. I did half of this trailer three months ago, the other half, and all I gotta do is slide the wheel on and we're set. This is what we do so that we can have a good, safe trailer that accurately tests these trailers on the FastLaneTruck.com and MrTruck.com.